for now. Another stage completed. Yeah. St. Albans, Newfoundland. Boy, did it ever feel nice to land here. The sun was out, so drying our still damp kit became a priority. Visiting the store was a feeling of luxury I can't explain. How good do we have it? Once the tide had risen, we would cross six kilometers over to Can River. Until then, we felt the comfort of this community and spent time with the well-energized youth. Dante, how's it going, man? Good. Do you spend much time uh, in the country or outdoors in general? Outdoors, riding bike. Yeah? Why? Why do you go outdoors and ride your bike? It's nice out, nice views. Hey, beautiful Exercise. view. Exercise. Do you think it's relaxing or peaceful? Or? Peaceful, relaxing, both. Do you like to explore and adventure to new places when, say, you ride your bike? or? Yep. Why? Interesting. See new things, maybe. Do you think people should come to Newfoundland and Labrador to see all the unique outdoors we have? People should come to Newfoundland and Labrador because it's a good place. Hey, that's the best kind. Thanks, buddy. Michael Wilcox. Right on, man. So do you spend much time uh, outdoors or in the country in general? Yeah, most of my time is outdoors. Yeah. In the boons. Hunting. Hunting, right on. What else do you like to do? Oh, uh, riding bike, well, here now. And I like to go out in the boat go fishing too, right? Yeah. Do you think it's important to get outside? Oh, yeah. Why? You just get activity in. You do? It's healthy. Yeah, no doubt. But, like Every time we go in the boat, we go to like, different places all the time. Very rarely goes to the same place. Why is that? Why do you go to different places? See if there's anything better, you know, exploring. I mean, stuff to do, right? Because I mean, it gets your mind off. Like if you're stressed and everything, like with really anything, you go outside. It relieves stress. It's fun to do. Yeah. Oh, I think they should come to land because it's a very nice spot. Right? <laughs> there's a lot of like high spots. Like my house is up there. You can see everything. Like good view and everything. Anything else you want to add about spending time outdoors or seeing new places or what you love about being outside, why it's important? I mean, you really just should get at it, really. It just it keeps you out of doing, like, I guess, bad stuff, you know. It's a good thing to be at. Hey, that's a good man. It was nice to hear some positive attitudes from Dante and Michael. We could all use more of it. Once again, time had come for us to move on. Had some premature uh, celebrations there in St. Albans, but we haven't met the halfway point technically. What do you think, Zach? You excited to go to Con River? We got a resupply waiting for us, man.
So I guess I forgot to mention we are in the Atlantic Ocean right now. So that's another milestone for the trip. We snowshoed, walked on land, barren through woods, paddled on lakes and rivers and streams and brooks and ponds. And now we're paddling in the Atlantic Ocean. Something we'll do again later in the trip if conditions hold up well. I'll get in closer now to the cliffside so we can get a cool view. But as I said, it's steep and cut, much like the Newfoundland ocean coastline. Very rugged, but just beautiful on the eyes. Very easy to look at and just get captivated by uh, how great it really is. It's a tough place for a tree to grow, but if a tree can put a root down, it will grow anywhere. He's like a statue. Sometimes. <laughs> Two bald eagles, Sack. A lot of boys are just steaming into port here now in the Cod River. The SS Newfoundland. What an evening. Just crazy. Couldn't have picked a better one to paddle across Bay to Spirit here. No, sir. I can't believe we've came this far and we're finally, I've thought about this for so long, coming into Con River. What it'd be looking like and how I'd feel, how we'd be holding up. And I couldn't have dreamt it any better than this right now. So, halfway sack, baby. best possible entrance to a halfway point of a trip. There's hardly a ripple out here in Beta Spear. Coming into Con River. See the reflection of the community off the ocean water here. All the history this place holds everywhere down here. Con River is you know, they roam the woods and waters here in Newfoundland. These people, they still do. But many years ago, this was their land. And this was their station. They left and went up through Jador Lake and Neil Peg and these big bodies of water. Peter Strides. And they went to Beta North, the Donut Gothics, and Mount Sylvester, and Mita Pond, and Jubilee Lake. And so will I. So, it's just coming in and doing what they would have done. It means a lot to me on this trip. Arrival to Mia Pugek was enriching. This was my first visit to the strong, vibrant community.
Resupply number two was thankfully held by the band's chief, Mizel Joe. We were treated with fresh, nourishing meals and learned about a project he had been working on for the Canadian Canoe Museum. Come on, Zach. Uh, we're just walking up now to check out uh, Chief Mizel's birch bark canoe that they've built. We're shipping up to Ontario. We're, we're they're going to fly us down, do a little ceremony, and uh, this is all there. Do whatever you want with it. There's no nails, no bolts, or anything in this. It's all all traditional material. It's an ocean-going canoe. It's not a lake canoe. It's ocean. Ocean going birch bark canoe. Yeah, you're saying the gunnels are built differently, hey? Yeah. And how exactly does that help well, in the ocean? When you're in the waves, the waves roll up, come up along the side and go down, of course. That uh, you have flat gunnels all the way up. Waves have tendency to coming over. Yeah, and then you're going to take on big, water. Big, big ocean waves, I mean, they're pretty. Yeah. They're not always rough, but they're big. That's spruce root. That's spruce root. Spruce root. Okay. So not maybe about seven hundred feet of spruce root in that. That's cedar. This this wood here and and the and the cedar, ribs. Hard, I think that might be a hardwood there, but this is okay. This is cedar here. And that's the cradle there. It's one of the uh, we use that cradle to move it around. This here. Yeah. That's used to. Flip it over and start it on this. So here. when you worked on the bottom of it, for example. Yeah. So we're going to have a little piece of Newfoundland uh, in Ontario, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. All the canoes we've built, uh, they've all had names. What was the name on this one again? Uh, probably going to be... Uh, Seahawk, is that what you said? Seahawk, yeah. Seahawk. Bivogus. That's in Mi'kmaq. Yeah. How, what is it? Hawk. How do you pronounce that? Bivogus. Bibo. Bivogus. Voice. Bivogus. Gwis. Yeah. Bivogus. Seahawk. Okay, Seahawk. Uh, basically, um, bear fat. I showed you the bear fat. Um, you did. And uh, spruce gum. Some are in that pot. See that they've already rendered down? Yep. And they, they test it out. They get the right texture to it so it don't crack. And when you put it in the, in the ocean now, it, it may have a few little cracks in it. So we'll bring it back in and we'll, we'll do it over again. Because it's going to leak. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually. But when it gets in the water for for a little while, it'll start to get a little bit soft anyway. Yeah. But so uh, that's how our people uh, travel along the coast in Newfoundland. And they came from uh, Cape Breton in canoes like this. Went back from here to Cape Breton. That's a long paddle in a canoe. Yeah, well, and generally, I mean, you're in the Atlantic Ocean here. We're not talking about yeah. like uh, a lake or nothing. We paddled from here to Port of Bass, 188 miles. Or something like 188 that. miles. How long would that take you? Well, it was probably a month altogether on the go. Paddling? Yeah. Where'd you sleep? On the beach. On the beach. Every night. But I mean, when you're in the crossing, the well, main. The crossing didn't take very long. The crossing only took 16 hours. Okay, so you did that in like a day. Well, night overnight, yeah. You kept paddling. Well, you had to. Yeah, once you're. Well, yeah, it must it, have been kind of cool uh, being in a canoe in the middle of, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, uh, Gulf of St. Lawrence, I guess. It's no guess. big deal. We need a birch bark canoe now. Yeah, that's big right? Deal. Yeah. Did you have to bail any water out? Well, we never took a lot of water out, but, we, you know, we had a bailer. And we had a safety boat along to as well. Okay, so like a support kind of. Yeah. Uh, like, how much birch bark would you use for that canoe? Oh, I. Exactly. That's what do you go peeling trees, of course, yeah. Well, uh, that particular bark, I think, here might have come from Ontario. We can't find, uh, like build this size canoe. Yeah, because you need a hard time getting that much bark in Newfoundland. Yeah. Now, the smaller canoe up there, that's Newfoundland bark. But I think this stuff we had to get come from Ontario, and even then, it's not good bark. Yeah. But it's uh, getting harder and harder all the time to get really good bark. I can imagine. Or, especially for the bigger canoes like this. So like years ago, uh, I mean, a, a normal birch bark canoe would only last a season, I guess. Well, if that. No, it, uh, birch bark lasts a long time. You oh, okay. So you would get through, oh, even going down rivers and uh, well, some of these rough routes that they would well, have gone well, down through? If they, if they had to go down rivers, I mean, to be honest, people use rivers all the time. And so did our people, but I mean, they were really careful. Yeah. And they always had repair kits with them. Yeah. They fixed the bark 
And the, and the spruce gum and the beer oil they had all the time. So the beer oil and spruce gum would be the repair kit? Yeah. So for my raft, I use Aquaseal <laughs> and uh, some Tyvek tape, That's right? right. Yeah. But uh, for, for yeah, them, it was... And spruce gum, and spruce gum so, was all around you. Yeah. I bet you it would work for me if I needed to, really. Yeah, it's hot. But I'd be yeah, very... Yeah, it's hot, though, eh? Okay, yeah. I'd have to... Yeah. I'd probably have to melt it around the fire somehow yeah. in my kettle. You got everything I need here. You certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's just a standard. That's a canvas one, yeah. Okay, canvas. That's, my, that's is it? my beast. That's your Argo. Yeah, I got a broken shaft on it, so I got to okay. fix it. That thing looks tough as nails. Oh, God. I've had a 16 foot aluminum canoe on top of that. So yeah, I was going to say that rack's pretty uh, yeah. convenient for yeah. trucking around they canoes or whatever. All the stuff back to the camp. Yeah. We'll pack everything up there. Boards or lives or whatever you're yeah. dealing with. I take a lot of gear on top of that. Right. My 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 fellow students do like that. A little different than, than a normal pattern. Okay. I just made up my own made up my own pattern. Okay, wicked. That's just a little freakish design that you yeah. went with. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's a little different than. Uh, hey, you get creative, right? I mean. Well, get kind of boring doing the same way. That right there is beer fat. That's mixed with. The oh, you mix that with the spruce gum. Yeah. And also render down, uh, make some oil. And okay. Just the fat to lift over. Okay. So they use that in. Uh, in or this. Or you can use oil too as well. Beer oil. Or, uh, or uh, put on my feet when I'm walking. And you put the oil on your feet? Yeah. The beer oil? Keep your feet from getting sore. You know what will take with you, but you got enough gear as it is. <laughs> well, you can give me beer fat. Yeah. Well, you, if you need it on your feet. Probably good for a sack of paws, eh? It could be, yeah. What do you think, Zach? Would you like beer? Beer oil for your paws, man? So what about as like uh, hair gel? Yeah. <laughs> Probably I not. I would recommend it that if, no. you're, if you're going out with a girl, don't, don't put that on. No, do that wouldn't do it, eh? That's our steamer for steaming wood. Okay. And I, weld, I weld it onto a 200 gallon tank. Now the boys don't use it because it's too warm and it says don't work so good as having this one. I prefer that one. Oh, this is an. Oh, they dip it in here and steam it here too. Yeah. No, no. They use this to steam the, the roots. Gotcha. I use that for steaming uh, the bigger piece of wood. So I'm making a fire and keep it going all day, and overnight. And see that tank on the side? That's full of water. Yeah. Get a fire going and the steam goes up into the box. Okay. Okay. And there's a little pipe that leads in there. Yeah. Okay. I see the pipe there. Now, boy, boy's been using the propane because it's faster. They said for long. But when I when I make stones, I'll put it in your leeward all night. Okay. You take it out literally from there, yep. and then you can bend it just any by hand, almost, right? Yeah, any way in shape. Right. You, want it. you can almost tie it in a knot. Like, does it take much effort, or? Yeah. No. The biggest effort is cutting it. Okay, fair enough. And the freezers are full of dead eagle. The freezers are full of what? Eagle. I, I collect all the eagles that turn into the wildlife in Newfoundland. They bring them, bring them here, and we, we put them here. And in the summer, I take them up to an island where my camp is that's protected by the province. But some of them are mature eagles, and some of them are. My skin boots are in there too. Oh, um, uh, seal skin. Yeah. They keep me in the freezer during the summer months. Yeah, that's right. The guys in, in Labrador, they do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. The eagle freezers. Yeah. So is there any other uh, animal that you do that with? Like, uh, uh, if I get a, a beer, a small beer cup, yeah. and I, um, they turn them in to me too, and I bury them. Okay. I put them in, and put it, like if I, I don't have time to do it right away, I just put it in the freezer, and when I get time, I'll bury it. So you requested to get these? Yeah. Okay. I, I had an agreement with the province that uh, I get all the eagles, and because... Uh, I didn't want them being thrown in the garbage dumps and stuff no. like that. How long ago was that now when you were... God, they're going right back to uh, the early 80s. That'd it? be a fun little ceremony. You just something quick, eh? You just... Well, you go take the, all the eagles out as you can. And we take we take the tail fan off sometimes. Okay. And sometimes we take the wings off for fans. Yeah. And people look for eagle feathers. Okay. And the rest of the eagle that's not used, we put back on the land. We don't bury them. We put them on the land and we'll cover them with... Uh, uh, bones and moss okay. and stuff. Yeah. It's sort of natural thing. Yeah, I understand. Wow, that's cool. 
But the island where the eagle go to is protected by the province. Okay. Misel was a very interesting man, and learning a bit about Mi'kmaq tradition was a treat. Next, he provided some wisdom for the trail. You can either go up when you when you get over here, you you can go, go through here. So cut through the country yeah, instead no, of home. It's not that far across here, actually. No. Like e even the brook is not very far, but when you get up here, it's, it's really good fishing. It was good fishing. I don't know about now, but it was good fishing. And then uh, um, when we went up, we we went down the end of the pond and went across the ridge cliff that way. Okay, across those. Yeah. It says Shoe Hill on the map, eh? Yeah. Do you know it by that, or you know it by a different name? You know, that's what we call it too as well. Shoe Hill. That runs all the way in through. But where you're going, it's it's not bad. I mean. Yeah. Through here. Yeah, anytime I see At least you cut off a lot of, because if you go up to there, there's a, there's a place called John Elliott's Port Ash going across from. Before moving on, I visited family and also got a quick scrub. That looks strange, Sack. What's that? A shower. Is that a shower, Sack? You're not getting in there. But I'm going to get my first shower in uh, 37 days. Come on, Sack. No, 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 just me, bud. All right, Keith. We'll see you again. All right. Okay. Appreciate everything. And uh, we'll be in touch, no doubt. Yep. All right. We'll see you. We'll be with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we may see you in Piper's Hole. Piper's Hole? Never know. On our way out, we broke off the main road to visit the new school and site of the annual powwow. Uh, the school is uh, a funding they've been after for years, trying to get a new school for fun. And mostly, like, lays on the shoulders of the chief. He's been pushing and pushing, and they finally got a new school. They started building last summer, I think, last spring. And it's supposed to be open for uh, this fall of 2017. Mia yeah. Bukek has come a long way since being established as a reserve in 1987. They are often pointed to by Aboriginal Affairs as a model community for other First Nations. Our stay was a memorable one. The first 320 kilometers uh, of our expedition has been unbelievable. Uh, there have been highs and there have been lows. Uh, we've battled and we've learned. Uh, we relaxed and we were captivated by the awe-inspiring beauty of Newfoundland's interior. So we're about halfway out the highway now and we're making our way to the transmission line which is around five kilometers from here. We restocked with food and some gear and some items had to be replaced after our incident uh, in the river back uh, four or five days ago. So we're now ready to go and continue east towards our next checkpoint in Swift Current. transmission line we had about 14 kilometers in to Madonna Gannix Lake. That was our next objective. For the next couple of days it will be up and down on this monotonous road which was put in place for the Muskrat Falls generating project. But if you look hard enough you can still find the beauty that's out there. So we ended up making it 18 kilometers today on day one back at it and we're five kilometers in from the road uh, just setting up camp by a little gully. Flies are a little thick here now, uh, you know, that's a sure sign that it's warming up but I just can't wait to get away from this bloody pole line but uh, that'll come tomorrow so we reside here uh, for the evening. Might be a trout out there. I'm sure gonna try once we get the camp set up.
nippers out there, Sack. Little nippers. Here we go, Sack. That's a nice little brookie there for us, bud. Jeez, look at that one. It's like mutated. Warped. Oh, never seen a trout like that before. Well, the little trouting hole uh, we camped by last night was absolutely filled with fish, but most we caught were only three, four, five inches uh, at the max. I'd say we got a dozen or so, but I kept two. So we'll have a little treat there for breakfast, won't we, Saku? We come into uh, to leg number three, which is about 150 kilometers with 16 days of food for Saku, and that's just normal servings. And uh, I have a mediocre 16 days worth of food, so that's around 2,800 calories per day. Uh, just enough to keep me going, and Saku gets a little more, of course, because he's just a puppy. That's his bag there. Well, I'm just there in the tent. Bit of trail mix, oatmeal, uh, you know, my pastures, jerky, all that good stuff. So, uh, we're fueled up, ready to go on a daily basis. And that's when the trout come into play. So, I mean, whenever we can get trout, we'll get them and uh, fill our bellies. But today, it's just a little appetizer <laughs> before my oatmeal. And Sacco already ate. So, for him, it's dessert. Sack who carries his own bowl and GoPro attachment. <laughs> uh, so we lose two hours this morning. Uh, we got around a quarter kilometer and I realized I can't find my false teeth. So <laughs> we went back to the campsite, checked, couldn't find it. I came back to my bag, emptied everything, turned it inside out, couldn't find it again and then went back and scanned the site for at least an hour and finally found them in the mass. What it was was there the last thing left in the tent in one of the pouches. And when I was flicking it to get all the uh, grass and bits of dirt and stuff out before I packed it up, they must have went flying off. Anyways, that's it. <laughs> uh, funny now, it wasn't funny uh, 20 minutes ago. Chopper's gone mad here now. Place on wheels, building the old transmission line. Oh, I can't wait to get to Madonna Gonix. We got uh, seven kilometers. Yeah, we're getting a little drop of water here at this little gully. So, something to wet the whistle, anyways. Hey, Sack. Zach's doing some good, aren't you, buddy? Man, he's got 13 pounds just about in his bag, and that's his all-time high, and he's carrying it like a champ. So, his paws are doing well. He's having a time, aren't you, Zach? <laughs> it's a fly. Isn't it? No, it's a bumblebee, Zach. What are you gonna do? He's been having a time with flies. I don't know if he's encountered a bumblebee yet. But he plays with flies and tries to eat them and catch them. Don't you, Sack? Don't let him sting you. And he's gone. Swig of water it is, Sack. Going down a hill means you usually got to go up one. Just up to the Bay of Nord River now, and uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of action going on. 
Boys are working on a bridge to get them across to the other side of the transmission line. Ah, big project, big project, but we're going up this way. Straight ahead into Madonna Gonix and we're getting out of this garbage. Thank God. Let's go, Sack. Now we're back into what we love. Let's do it, bud. There he goes, like the bullet. Uh, getting close on seven o'clock now. We're gonna get uh, camp set up at the end of Madonna Gonix Lake. God love ya. We're like two kids in a candy store here now. As Tom Petty said, into the great wide open, baby. Come on, Sack. Oh, man. Get a bit tangly here now. Ah, we'll get out there. The first order when I get to camp is usually get the gear out and uh, get the kettle on. So we'll go fill the kettle up, get a nice hot cup of tea, and Sack is going to get fed. And that's usually the, the first three things that are done when we get here. Drop the bags, empty the gear, sack of eats, and has a cup of tea. Usually the tea is ready by the time we got the tent up. Hey, sack. All right, come on. Dandy little spot here, just out the side of Baden Nord River. So uh, we're loving that. Got the raft and everything ready to go for tomorrow. Well, laid out her anyways. She's still gotta be inflated. Fishing rods here. I'm gonna go for a flick now at once. Once the tank gets up and it has me tea. That way uh, I can seal up some supper and still eat the supper I had for my packed meal, plus the trout, right? Double, double the energy. <laughs> What a view, man. What a view. We're going right up through there tomorrow, Sack. What do you think, bud? This is unknown territory now for me, so I always makes things exciting. Uh, I like making my own trail and being places I haven't been before. That's part of this trip, uh, is getting away from uh, familiar, familiar spots and coming to see new things. So we're going to do that until we eventually... What's going to happen here, we'll hook into the route that I was uh, on when I came in this summer to uh, prepare for this trip. I flew into Mount Sylvester and uh, paddled a series of lakes down to Mita Pond. Uh, eventually we'll get into that route. I don't think it's very long, only around 30 kilometers from here. I'll be back into uh, a familiar zone. So, Right now, living life on Madonna Gonix uh, at the mouth of the Beta Nord River. A few tips to clean the kettle out. And now we got fresh, nice cold water from the Beta Nord River. A little nicer than that gully where we were scooping water up from last night. But hey, once it's boiled, it's all the same. Could be bog water to me at this moment. That's how bad I want a cup of tea. And sack, he'll drink it all. Man, I'd say we had, what do you think, sack? About 20 vehicles stopped us today. And uh, hey, we had some good conversations. Uh, met, some, met some really nice people who were interested in what we were doing. And we shared our stories. So, hey, uh, I enjoyed that. Like I said, glad to be out here now, but uh, that was alright for a day. Kettle goes on now. So I'll place that right there. Uh, sometimes I get the kettle stick and hangs it over the fire. That's the thing we like to do uh, Newfoundland Labrador, but right now I'm just uh, couldn't find a good one. And I just want a quick cup of tea, so it's going on top of the fire. Kettle stick usually hovers over, and that way it's not so hard to get it off uh, when you got real hot flames coming at you. 
Now we gotta feed Sack. Sack's bowl. I got Sack you a collapsible bowl. Usually that's a sign of supper time for Saku, right? He sees the ball, he knows it's coming up. So that gives him a little excitement in his uh, mornings and evenings when that time comes around. Hey, Sack. Hey, you excited now, aren't you? You want your food? Oh, you bet you do. So, Saku here. What I've done for the trip for Saku, uh, I mean, in case you're wondering about his food and what he's eating. Uh, I know I've probably shown by now he's eating normal kibble uh, besides scattered uh, the trout we get we split those for the most part sometimes he gets some of my human food too right and that's okay isn't it Zach? but I did him up him daily bags of food so this is four scoops right Zach? two scoops in the morning and two scoops in the evening and that's what he was having before we left and that's enough for him I'm sure that he could eat probably eight scoops a day but I mean, we can't carry that much weight, and we get enough trout to supplement our diet, don't we, Seth? So, about half of it goes in. It's a rough estimate. Hey, Sack. Sack, hold on now. Sit. Good boy. So, I've also been putting the water. No, sit. Good boy. I've been putting water in with his food, right? Because uh, he doesn't drink it. When we get to every river and sh stream and brook and pond and whatever water source we get uh, to throughout the day, he doesn't always, I'll put a bit more in there. He doesn't always drink, so if I put him with his food, I know he's getting enough water and he doesn't mind it, hey? So go on. Good boy. That's not going to last very long. <laughs> This is the 21st time I put the tent up. Great. And that doesn't count the other 20 times I took it down. That's life on the move. But when you put in a good day and you get your camp set up, you're on cloud nine. Floating up in the floating up in the clouds, having a time. Now, we're not in the best spot tonight, but, hey, like I said, it's not all perfect. Tea time, isn't it, bud? Tea time for me, nap time for Sack. Second cast in the Beta Nord River. We got something on here. Woo! Little witness putting show on, I think. Another one on here. He's a winning ish. I'm gonna put him back and try for a bigger one, I think. Come on, buddy. And they're biting flat out. This one's not too big, I just lost a doozy though. We got a couple for the pan here. Uh, a little bunch of small ones go. Tomorrow morning, hopefully, we'll hook the big guy. The few trout I got this evening will go to Saku. He's had a big day carrying the most weight he's ever carried so far the trip. And uh, he needs it more than me. There'll be lots of fish to come. Hey, Sack. What do you think, bud?
Have at her. Jeez, don't eat the bowl too. Day 42 of the trip here. Uh, and the boys are on the side of the Bay of Norn River. Just south of Madonaganix Lake, so uh been waiting to get here for a while. This is gonna be a fun part of the trip and we're ready to go, aren't we, Sack? Sack's back to sleep. He was up for a pee and now he's back uh, having a few winks. <laughs> big day, big day. <laughs> oh my. I don't care how particular or how careful you are with your gear out here. It's not going to last. You're going to lose and break things at uh, alarming rates. That right there is my telescopic rod that I picked up two days ago to replace the one I broke uh, on leg two of the trip and the tip is snapped off already. I can only assume that it happened when we were bushwhacking uh, up the side of the Bay of Nord River here to our campsite late yesterday evening. So that's why I got another one. <laughs> you, can't, uh, you can't do too much about it. Uh, that's life in the bush. It's a rough go sometimes. Good boy. Yeah, there we go. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Back in. In Mi'kmaq language, Madonaganix Lake means end of portage. Years ago, this was the beginning of easier going as they headed deeper into their hunting and trapping grounds to provide for their family. For us today, it was our release into the 2900 square kilometer Bay de Nord Wilderness Reserve, one of the last unspoiled areas remaining on our island. As you've seen earlier, the only scar is a transmission line which runs through its southern extremities. Let's hope that it's the last one. We got a full load on the raft here uh, this afternoon. This is the most we'll get in it. We can feel it too on this side. Uh, it's a little heavier. It's, it's really hard to pack this thing evenly. And, uh, and by that I mean having weight balanced on both sides. So right now, if I tip this way too much, the raft really dips to that side. So I gotta try to keep leaning this way and basically whatever side Saku's leaning on too, right? Because right now Saku's leaning on this side. He's pulling the boat like that. So I gotta go against it. But I didn't feel it so much coming down the bigger lakes last going off uh, on the other side of Can River because we didn't have as much weight in my pack or Saku's bag being full back there with dog food. So right now, uh, probably 340 pounds in this thing. Close on it. I'm just gonna take my time paddling up with Donaganix. We'll do a bit of fishing along the way, and I want these few days here to be uh, kind of a relaxed, take my time, because it's my uh, first chance to really do that on the lakes since the ice is frozen. I kind of made a push once meal peg on top, and I tried to get the con in a rather quick pace. The days I was stopped, there was still ice in the lake, or it was too windy when I was at Cold Spring. So I don't want to rush the trip, that's the whole thing. It's taking our time, we'll push when we got to, 
and also relax when I feel like it's necessary. I'm right now starting off this paddling route. Fresh lakes, they're not hydro uh, lakes or ponds now, so these are all natural, natural water flow. Natural shorelines. I like it. Got the dandy on now, buddy. What do you think, Zach? Decent little winning ish there. <laughs> Every bit of a pound, pound and a half. Got him good. Losing him, Zach. <laughs> We're running out of space here on the raft. I got to rig up a little uh, trout line here to hook him onto. I got nowhere else to put them, I guess, on the floor, but there's not a whole lot of room, is there, Sack? You're here and I'm here. <laughs> Trout will be covered in sack here, isn't it, won't it, Sack? Little bastard. Alright, that might do. For now. I'll let him hang out in the water now. That way, uh, he'll stay cool, anyways. Looks like this little run out is going to give us some trouting fun. Hey, Sack. One cast, one fish. Nice little brookie. Hey, Sack. Put him back. There you go, my buddy. Oh, take care. I added to the string of fish and uh, now we're ready to go. Hey, Sack. We're gonna have a good supper and we're not done yet, everybody. Ah, it's a little dicey coming in here now where the, uh, where the lake narrows at the top. Like, looks like we gotta deal with one last set of rapids, Saku. See what we're looking at. <laughs> Hopefully, the raft doesn't float away. It should be all right. This is going to be a bit of uh, evening tangle, Saku. Unless we wait till tomorrow, we could do that and put a little campsite here on this. Looks like there's an island where the river splits. There's some ducks up there. We're gonna have to bushwhack through here. I'll figure something out.
Voor de hinkzak. Might have to go somewhere else. I'm gonna take a look in here for a campsite. I don't know. I don't really want to set up here though. We were just over there by that little run out. Uh, now I'm over by this one. We're gonna set camp up. Just over here. It's a half flat spot, but uh, uh, it's just past 6.30 now, so there's no need to push on any further. I'll take that. But by the time we pour tires up through here, get back into the last section and uh, find the camp, ah, it'll be pushing 8 o'clock. That's too late. What do you think, Zach? Feed a fish at the camp up? Had to get a fire going here ASAP. Flies will carry you away. Woohoo! <laughs> carry you. Not bad for winning this, pretty pink. Not blood red or nothing. She's gonna be good. Yee -hoo -hoo. That's a plate of trout there, buddy. Sack gets a trout kibble mix for uh, dinner tonight, Sack. Enjoy it, bud. Much better supper than last night, eh, boy? Get it in, you kid. And then I'm gonna have trout and rice. Can't beat it, baby. Little secret spice here. So I cleaned that. Uh these trout just around 15 20 yards away in the little brook uh, and if I throw any scraps that I don't give the saku bones and fins and tails uh, they go out in the pond as we move into Beta Nord here there'll be more and more black bears so if I go leaving this stuff around here it's going to increase the chance uh, that they'll come in to our camp so just little uh, precautionary measures to keep the black bears out of uh, our area. Fresh cut trout with a topping of rice. Dinner has been served. That is. My son, if it wasn't for the morning coffee, I don't know what I'd do. Deadly. It's extra strong this morning. We're going to try to get uh, five kilometers up to Jubilee Lake. That way uh, I'll get the three kilometer portage all the way. That's a nice day out. Right now we're just going up to the raft. This was like a couple hundred yard trip to get up to uh, the last part of this lake. Come on, Zach. Whew. 
she's tangly in here. Come on, Zach, keep it up, bud. Sometimes me and Zach just take different paths. But most times we stick together. Here he comes. Whew. Good boy. Go on. Here we go, Zach. That should be good enough to get us there, Zach. Almost lost her. We got a nice little tailwind here behind us. It's giving us some help. We won't be going nowhere on Jubilee. We get up there today. I just want to get off this now. swells in here now. Water to kill me if you know what I was at. Here on this lake. She's a filmmaker. Sorry. I love you. I'll be okay. Zach, you see? Waves are cresting the side of the raptor. I'm glad we got off that. Things escalated in a hurry out there. I'm pulling the raft from behind here this morning. <laughs> Look at this one I just plucked out. Hold on. Uh, the rain's picked up a bit now. So the rocks are going to be slippery, you got to be careful. <laughs> 